everyone and good afternoon this is Deb from the Geelong Jail Museum and today I thought I would start a new series of social media posts uh, that we're going to be calling the Museum Spotlight. So what I thought I would do is just highlight uh, different objects that we've got in our collection and a little bit more of a background to them uh, and also perhaps some of the areas of the jail that you're more interested in. So if there's something in particular that you would like me to have a look at and to give you a little bit more information on, please feel free to shoot us a message on the page or email us uh, at info at So today we're going to be looking at uh, one of the objects that we've got on display in the Rogues and Vagabonds room. Now this, if I can turn the camera around... So the object that we'll be looking at today is this one. It's part of RU's display. So RU was a, uh, a Chinese prisoner, one of the Chinese miners uh, that was in here for murder. Uh, so he was here in the 1890s. And this particular rule book is dated from 1896. So I'm going to grab it and we're going to go through and have a look at a few of the highlights in the book. So this is a uh, extract from rules and regulations. This one is in particular is for male prisoners in 1890. So this particular book was out of cell 25. We were lucky enough to pick this up in uh, an eBay auction, I think, uh, late last year, and it is actually from the jail. Uh, it's in fairly good condition, uh, but we'll go through and have a look at some of the rules that apply to male prisoners while they were here at Geelong in the 1890s. So bear with me and we will get to it. So this is the book here. So you can see on it, uh, Her Majesty's Jail in Geelong, extracts from rules and regulations applicable to male prisoners from cell number 25 in 1890. Now the, um, the rules were applicable and were um, related to the jail uh, act, which in this stage, the latest jail act at this point would have been in 1890. And that was the act from Parliament that set down the rules and regulations for all of the prisons uh, here in Victoria. But I'm going to go through and we're going to find a couple of the more interesting rules uh, to show you. I find this one funny. This is right on the inside cover. And it's got every prisoner shall receive clean blankets on admission to prison, which shall be changed for clean blankets quarterly and off not if necessary for cleanliness. No prisoner shall bathe in the same water than any other prisoner has bathed in, which that's handy because in the early days it was rumoured that they used the same bath water. Uh, and if ice bugs or fleas are discovered, then everything else would be uh, cleaned and the governor informed. That's just one of the rules. Let's go and find the rules that relate to food. So here is uh, some of the dietary scales. Uh, so these are the rations that prisoners would be fed while they were in jail. And you'll see here it says daily rations for prisoners at hard labour. They would have, uh, men would have 20 ounces of bread, 8 ounces of maize or ocean meal, 12 ounces of meat, 16 ounces of potatoes, uh, 1 uh, ounce of sugar, uh, half an ounce of soap and half an ounce of salt. Now, I believe these are daily rations. Now, females would get uh, a lot less for our female prisoners. So in the 1890s, we still had female prisoners here at Geelong. So they would get uh, 12 ounces of bread, 6 ounces of maize, 8 ounces of meat, 12 ounces of potatoes, 1 ounce of sugar, half an ounce of soap, and half an uh, ounce of salt. Um, it would, depending on what else they were doing, they would actually have different uh, scales. So you can see here the other scales uh, of what they would receive. Uh, and the last one here, pack number 13, which you can see just above my hand here, is daily rations for children above 2 and under 8. Uh, so these were, were children of prisoners that were incarcerated with their mother. So they would be given eight ounces of bread, four ounces of meat, one pint of milk, half an ounce of soap, and one ounce of sugar as part of their rations per day. Another one of the rules that I find really interesting, this actually just shows the, um, the authority that was needed. So it says, male prisoners when passing any principal officer are required to salute him by touching their hats. When they are not on the move and any principal officer approaches, they are, unless at meals or at labour, to stand up with their heels together, their hands by their sides. All prisoners, whether male or female, when in their cells and not in bed, must, on hearing their cell door open, stand up in the centre of the cell, facing the door with their heels together and their hands by their sides. 
Now, we often talk about the silence uh, in cells uh, or in the prisons system, especially in the early days. The Fentanyl system was very much a, um, a solitary system. Now, this book, remember, is in 1890, but sol uh, silence is still a very, very big part of the discipline. So you can see here item 23, prisoners must preserve strict silence at all musters, at meals, in the dormitories and cells at night while undergoing solitary confinement or uh, marching to and from their places of labour which they must do in regular order, two and two, and any prisoner while in exercise or in the cells, scratching or writing on the posts, rails, walls, or other portions of the jails or fittings or furniture will be punished. Here's a few rules in regards to how they must be dressed. So for men, the hair and whiskers of male prisoners whose sentences do not exceed three months shall be cut if it be considered necessary by the officer in charge. And the hair of those under longer sentences is to be cut close, their whiskers shaved off, and this must be repeated as often as may be necessary until the prisoners are within three months of discharge, when their hair and whiskers may be permitted to grow to a moderate length preparatory for their release from confinement. We go over here to the females. Uh, female prisoners are required to wear their hair divided from the front, coiled uh, up in a knot at the back of the head, the front hair to be parted down the centre and worn off the face. The hair of the female prisoner may be cut on account of vermin or dirt or when the medical officer deems it requisite on the grounds of health. So I hope that you found that interesting. That's just uh, one of the items that we have on here, uh, on display here at the Geelong Jail. Uh, we have a number of objects in uh, a number of different uh, locations here, especially in the front wing of the jail. That's the main one that we've been working on uh, in the past 12 months. We have a brand new big display that's coming up hopefully in November, uh, just depending on with all the, the COVID stuff, we'll see how we go with that. But um, that's it for me for now. Like I said, if there's anything that you more that you'd like to know about the rule book or about anything else that we have in the collection here at the Geelong Jail, please feel free to shoot us a message and we'll see you soon. Bye.